Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and yeah, this week's kind of all over the place. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. Yeah, I'm not so sure how I feel about this. On the one hand, we got some pretty high-profile new entries and returns that should be reasonably interesting to discuss. But on the other hand, I don't know how much any of this will last given that we likely have a Lil Durk album bomb coming next week. And it's not like the charts moved all that much, all things considered. Case in point, our top 10, where for somehow another week, Last Night by Morgan Wallen is squatting at the number one. Well, I say somehow, but I know exactly why this song is so dominant. It comes down to good sales, ruling streaming, and radio pickups that are not slowing down. This could very easily wind up as one of the biggest songs of 2023 based off of all that aggregate volume near the top. Now compare this to Flowers by Miley Cyrus at number two, where it is dominant on radio, but absolutely on the downswing, and the margin is only growing there. Same sort of thing with Kill Bill by SZA at number three, which is losing even even faster across the board. Then we got Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez up to number four, predominantly on big radio growth, and then a small spike for Favorite Song by Tusi up to number five, riding good streaming and radio traction. Now don't get me wrong, I don't mind that song, but I am increasingly annoyed that it's doing far better than Rod Wave ever has. I mean, this is what competent promotion and label backing actually looks like, people. But it's worth highlighting that these are gains that are more driven off of the loss of other tracks, like Ella Bella Sola by Eslabon Armado and Pesa Pluma down to number six. With a good streaming week not quite compensating for YouTube losses and radio being very slow to get on board. No surprise there. And on that note, All My Life by Lil Durk featuring J. Cole fell off the debut to number seven. Even if radio has shown up surprisingly early, there were some streaming losses. I fully expect it to rebound next week. But then we got a new debut in our top 10, Where She Goes by Bad Bunny at number eight. We'll get more to the song later on, but as it is, when the streaming is this strong, it's not surprising. The big question will be, like with any Bad Bunny song, if the radio actually shows up. And it knocks back our last two songs in the top 10. Creepin' by Metro Boomin, 21 Savage, and The Weeknd down to number 9. Even as radio has been surprisingly slow to get rid of this. And Fast Car by Luke Combs at number 10, which might be surging on the radio, but needs a lot to catch up with its streaming and sales margins. I'm thrilled it's going to become a hit, but it's going to take more to hit a peak anytime soon. So on the flip side, let's get to our losers and dropouts, and we got some really big ones in the latter category. No, I'm... I am not remotely happy that Ceilings by Lizzie McAlpine is going to fall well short of making any year-end list, but I'm also not about to complain that Wild As Her by Corey Hart will likely be in the same boat. But outside of that, Rich Flex by Drake and 21 Savage clinched its year-end spot, as did Superhero, Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin, Future, and Chris Brown, and Handle On You by Parker McCollum looks like it could just scrape by on the very bottom edge. Now for our losers... Again, there's really not that many of them here. Sadly, off the debut, Life Goes On by Ed Sheeran featuring Luke Combs slid down to 85. I'm thinking I might have to hope for the long game for this one to catch up, especially on the radio. But hey, at least Mathematical Disrespect by Lil Mabu crashed a bit down to 59. Outside of that, Double Fantasy by The Weeknd and Future hit 73. Nonsense up by Sabrina Carpenter finally took a hit down to 78. And Red Ruby the Sleaze by Nicki Minaj just never got going properly at 83. I mean, similar case for painting pictures by Superstar Pride at 93, although I'd point more to that one getting kneecapped in midway through its ascent. Now for our gains and returns. And there's only one tangible gain this week, and it's friggin' need a favor by Jelly Roll. That's not even worth caring about. No, what has my interest are the four returns with the weakest probably being jaded by Miley Cyrus at 90. It looks like they're finally shipping it to radio. I know a lot of folks really love this song. It's just never clicked for me. It happens. But the other returns are bigger news and are much better. Wreckage by Nate Smith climbed back to 97. That's good. But the bigger stories start with America Has a Problem by Beyonce getting a big remix with Kendrick Lamar to put it in at 38. My thoughts on said remix? 
it's solid and Kendrick works on this sort of production and I'm happy it's giving a song a proper second life but I've also never really thought Kendrick and Beyonce have great chemistry as much as I love a song like Freedom it kind of was an issue on that song too but here's the newest return that makes me the happiest Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift has finally busted out and smashed back at 49. I have said for years now that if this song had been Lover's proper lead-off single, the album run would be remembered way more fondly than it is, with a pulsating synth groove and St. Vincent on guitar. If we have to get this four years later, I will take what we can get. Phenomenal song. But now on to our proper reasonable list of new arrivals. Unfortunately, we have to start with number 96, Baby Don't Hurt Me by David Guetta, Anne-Marie, and Coy LeRae. What is love? So let me explain why songs like this anger me so much these days. Because this sort of huge sample clearance and interpolation, it isn't just overdone with the What Is Love by Hathaway sample, especially when Eminem put out No Love with Lil Wayne as one of the couple songs that hasn't aged like shit from the recovery era and actually made it work. But only commercial hacks like David Guetta have the capital to even afford this, to get a sample clearance this recognizable and huge. Because it's not like everyone else is coming for his production or something, which sounds as stiff, flat, and dated as ever. Hell, I could say something for Anne Marie's entire presence on this song, who has never showcased that much personality, but it just breaks my heart that Coy LeRae has decided that hopping on all this throwback sampling is going to become her thing in 2023, instead of cultivating more of a unique sound. I mean, this is not personally as bad as I'm Good Blue, which was produced like it was pulled from a dumpster in 2017, but this is as soulless and crappy with an aggressively uninteresting way. Next, number 87, You by Dan and Shay. So I was more intrigued about this new Dan and Shay song than I probably should have been. Now granted, I've been nicer to this duo than most, going back to when I was first reviewing them in 2014 when they were not getting any crossover hits at all, but this is kind of an interesting time in mainstream country, looking to transition into some rougher sounds, and I didn't know how Dan and Shay would be able to handle that. That was before I realized that this was a track from their 2021 album that's only hitting the Hot 100 now, with perhaps the most rote composition I have heard in a long time that drives for some touches of soul with the organ and the backing vocals, but it's all way too sanitized to sell any of it all that well. And with the love song lyrics feeling beyond generic, I mean, just ship this express to the Hallmark Channel. Let's move on. Number 65, Angel Part 1 by Kodak Black, Enelie Choppa, Jimin, Jake, and Money Long. Those wings, people like me break. So one thing I unabashedly like about the Fast and the Furious movies is that their soundtracks are stuffed with these ridiculous, overstuffed collaborations that only barely seem to make sense. And even if I don't like the majority of artists on this song, I was at least expecting an entertaining disaster. And thus, I kind of regret to inform you that it's considerably more boring than it really should be. I mean, Jimin and Money Long handle the hook, and they're the only ones whose vocals sound somewhat decent in this brooding, don't get too close to me, my life is dangerous and hard song. And then Kodak Black tries to be respectable and comes out dull. And Ali Choppa tries to be respectable and comes out kind of hilarious. And now he tries to parrot all the franchise's dumb catchphrases about family. And then Jake just humiliates himself with his overcompressed yowling, unsurprising there. I mean, I guess the piano line is fine against the dry and cheap sounding trap percussion. And I actually think the final hook hits pretty well. There's a good crescendo. Jimin and Money Long actually have chemistry at least, so I don't hate this, but the more serious it tries to be, the less serious I take it. Not exactly a good sign, just saying. Number 63, Two Summer From Cole, Audio Hug by Summer Walker and J. Cole. So putting aside the slightly weird title, this is the first song on that Summer Walker EP that I honestly thought would chart more songs this week, but this is the only track that got through that features Summer repeating a single line for two hooks surrounding an extended verse from J. Cole. And 
Yeah, okay, it's generally sweet, with the piano line and the shambling percussion, with J. Cole basically sending a message of vulnerable affirmation to Summer Walker, given that she had twins, she's trying to balance out being a mom and an artist at the same time. I wouldn't say there's a lot to this song. I did appreciate that J. Cole shouted out SZA and especially Ari Lennox near the end of the verse, especially as Ari Lennox is on his label, could use more of a proper push. But, okay, it's a cute moment. This is more of an intro than a song proper, but it's fine. I'll take it. Number 54, Say Yes to Heaven by Lana Del Rey. Okay, this is a weird one. Apparently, this is a track that Lana Del Rey has had in some variety since around 2013, originally intended for ultraviolence, but it was cut, remaining one of those unreleased gems that's been bootlegged time and time again in the decades since. So, instead of pushing any songs from that new album, she finally released this, of course it charted high, and, oh, I don't know, I'm far from being a fan of early Lana Del Rey, and you can tell she's advanced by leaps and bounds as a songwriter and singer since this. The hazy guitar line is nice with the understated tremors of percussion and strings, and I guess I don't mind the sentiment of her pleas to sustain some form of relationship that she seems to think is doomed anyway, but nothing about the oddly basic melodic composition or Lana Del Rey's delivery makes me think that there's much heaven here in this relationship at all. I mean, by the standards of her early work, it is better than I expected. I get why it might be a fan favorite. She's just set higher standards since. All I'm saying. Number 36, Morning by Post Malone. It's killing my buzz, that's why they call it morning. Thought I was strong enough, threw my bottle at the sky, said, God, that's a warning. Okay, it's set. We're getting that Post Malone album in late July. And while Chemical's doing what it needs to on pop radio and is mostly growing on me, this is playing more to his trap side with the heavier percussion that's actually pretty well blended against the rattling reverb guitars. And honestly, I really like the hook on this a lot too. The entire track has this woozy, frustrated vibe of someone who drank way too much in the blistering summer heat and is just staggering through his day where fake friends, drug abuse, and loneliness leaves him striking out and trying to find someone in which to actually vent. And the fact that he consistently fails so much might be the reason why the song barely runs two and a half minutes. I, I mean, I do wish there was another verse. It feels a bit abbreviated, really feels built for TikTok, but I think Post Malone might actually be two for two on his singles here with songs I like. I don't think I've ever said that about the guy. In the meantime, yeah, this is good. Check it out. Number 35, TQM by Fuerza Regida. <laughs> I really wish more of these regional Mexican songs stuck out for me so I could have more to say beyond a frustration with this formula still not clicking. But what this is one of the more egregious cases, where the trumpets are so staccato and farty with so little groove that the underpowered clicking gallop passing for percussion and decent guitar work just get overshadowed by them. Granted, when I did translate the song, it's all about luxuriating amidst the spoils and shouting out a bunch of cartels, including a demand for his own Kylie and comparing themselves to Travis Scott. Not exactly the wisest decision to go there, even if Travis is dropping something this year. And then referencing Faruko's Pepes. Another bad decision, because that's a much better song I'd rather be listening to. Again, I get the tradition in which these tracks operate, but there's this unease in the content that doesn't match the very jaunty tone. It doesn't work for me. Yeah, I can't recommend this. And finally, number eight, Where She Goes by Bad Bunny. <laughs> Yo sé que fue una noche nada más Que no se vuelva a repartir not gonna lie, when I saw a Bad Bunny song with a full English title, I was wondering if it's gonna be sung entirely in English. But that's not the case with this, where it seems like he's heading towards a bassy, pulsating Jersey club beat with against plenty of atmospheric synth swell. But unlike a lot of Jersey club that I've heard thus far, the percussion feels a bit more balanced and defined with that gun cock sound effect to add to some texture here. And that actually works for the sort of song where you can tell that Bad Bunny's caught for feelings for this rebound 
and she doesn't want to re-engage with him so there's some passive aggressive flirting and competition going on with plenty of references to the hot sex that they did have and while I'm not sure I put it among my favorite Bad Bunny songs the track has this darker pulsating intensity that he sells really effectively especially if the synths open up across the second verse to accentuate that siren and that negative space and loneliness so uh yeah I'd call this pretty damn solid too a very pleasant surprise both for Bad Bunny and Jersey Club nice stuff you know what in fact yeah, Bad Bunny's getting the honorable mention. Best of the week is going to Post Malone for Morning, which really stuck for me way more than I expected. Worst of the week is Easy with Baby Don't Hurt Me by David Guetta and Marie and Coy Ray. With dishonorable mention, it's going to TQM by Floreza Regida. I mean, between the subject matter and those farty horns, I just can't get behind it. Next week, it's going to be Lil Dirk. We'll have to see how much impact that album bomb will land. It's going to be interesting. But until then... I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.